So I've said it before and I'll say it again, some of my favorite apps are those that take complex functionality and boil it down into something that is user friendly and awesome to use. And one of those apps for sure is Andrew Huang's Flip app. Now I've been using it a little over a month on and off and I just kinda wanna share some of my thoughts. Stay tuned. <music> What is up creatives? I'm Jarrell, your music technologist. And on this channel, I make a whole lot of videos on the creative process for iPad music production, as well as gear reviews, uh, tips and tutorial videos, things like that to help you make dope music. If that is something you would enjoy, definitely consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you are alerted the next time I post a video. That being said, Andrew Huang's Flip app is pretty dope, and it's something that you might want to pick up for yourself for your uh, iPad music production, um, but there's a couple things I want to talk about first with it. Um, first is, who is this app for? What does it do well? I think the first step to answering those questions is understanding exactly what it is and what it's not. So, um, the Flip app, which I have here in front of me, it is really just a high-powered sampler with a lot of different features it's not a DAW and one of the things you want to you know do when you're thinking about an app like this is not look at it as a DAW it's not it's just a sampler with a lot of features um, and you know there's other sampler apps out there like Koala Sampler or Elliot Garage's Segments you know even more basic ones like Blocks Wave um, and I think this app definitely falls in the same category but it does a lot of things really well so First things first, this app goes for $9.99 in the App Store, and I'm hard pressed to find anything that gives you more value in an app for music production than that. So let's take a look at it, you know? Some of the things that are the best about this app, really just its design. A very clean layout and design with just a couple pops of color on the different pages. Now, what this video is not, is this is not a exhaustive uh, tutorial on the Flip app. Um, Andrew Huang actually has a really great tutorial of his own on his channel. I'll link that down in the description. He also does some great short form content like two or three minute videos called Flip Tips, which I think is pretty clever, uh, of just features, basic features that the app does. So I'll link all of that down in the description. But back to the app. If you ever need to figure anything out and you're not into looking at video tutorials, there is this uh, help button up here at the top. Like puts a little glowing ring around the app and you can just kind of click on something and you know learn a little bit more about it so that is super dope I think that a lot more apps should do that because that is a really really helpful feature so you've got several different sections of the app this is where you get your projects you've got the sample tab and I'll talk a little bit about what I did in this tab this is basically just enlarged pads so you can play things in and then you have your sequencer, which is you know kind of like your piano roll. You can pull up some MIDI keys, your velocity, automation, things like that. And that's actually a really in-depth section, and I'm not gonna go fully in-depth on that. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. This is your basic mixer. I really like the way it's laid out. It's really clean looking. And then you've got you know some mastering effects you can do. It's very limited, but uh, still very powerful in my opinion. And then you've got your arrangement, which is, this is probably the more unique function. You know, you create your patterns on the left side here and um, you can make up to 16 patterns, which is, you know, it's kind of a limitation, but you can make up to 16 and then you can drag them over to create your order. And you can have as many on here as you want for the order. And then you can just delete them off if you don't want them there. Oh, and it's playing. I'll play for you really quick a track that I made in uh, Flip. I made it fairly recently. It's 100% not my best work. I'll give you that right now. But that's kind of how it is when you're getting used to new software. It's not you know the best thing I've ever made. But um, I was able to make every single sound that's in this song uh, out of just using my mouth. And I did that through the Flip app sample tab. This is definitely the most powerful, most potent functionality 
of this app. And it's a really, really, really good intro into sound design for people that are trying to get into that. I felt like I learned a lot about how to manipulate sounds um, just by using this. So um, really quick, I'll play for you uh, what the track sounds like right now. Okay, there you go. Nothing fancy, but I think it sounds pretty good, you know, for a basic track. So let's look at just a couple of things about how I was able to make this, and it'll kind of help guide you in how you could make something yourself in an app like Flip. So we'll go to the sample tab, and right here, sounds like a pretty decent kick sample. I made that by literally just in the iPad microphone going, and then I came in here, and I, you know, set my parameters here, turn the pitch down pretty far, um, and then the gain here, turned it up quite a bit. And then there's, so that's your sample, you know, you got your basic stuff here. You can even set the root of the chord, uh, sorry, the root of the sample, so what note it starts on. Um, and then you've got your envelope here, set some parameters there. You've got an EQ, which if you play it with the visualization on, It'll kind of show you the waveform, which I think is super dope. Um, then you've got your effects, very limited. You've got a maximum of four, but powerful nonetheless. So you've got filter, bit crush, and chorus is what I use. I did not use the delay on the kick because that was sounding kind of weird. Um, and then right here is the browse section, and that's where you can drag in your own samples to any one of these pads. Um, on the left side, it's either ones that you've imported as well as ones that are already stock in the program, which you can just click the little folder to get to those. Um, and then you've got import here if you want to open it, open up something that's in your uh, file folders, which is what I did for some of these. But um, all of the samples that I did here are actually my own voice, like I said. And I did the same thing to make a hi-hat, a, a little, kind of like a little rim shot snare, and then I made an 808. And then I also made a lead synth, kind of a bell thing. So, really quick, I just want to talk about some of the limitations and the benefits of something like this. So we've kind of touched on the benefits a little bit. Let's talk about some of the limitations. So the reason this is not a DAW, for one, there's no AUV3 or IAA support. So you can't uh, bring in any other plugins or sounds that you have. Um, but the, another limitation is you have a maximum of a four bar loop. Uh, so if you go into, say the, sorry, let me pull it up so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> that would be helpful. Um, go into the sequencer tab, you'll notice the maximum loop is four bars, and it's actually set to one by default. You actually have to drag it uh, to make it the full four, um, which is also one kind of annoying limitation, is when you're ready to record, and you press this record button here, by default it's set to a one bar loop. So you play in one bar, and then it starts looping before you're able to actually finish what you wanted to play in the four bar chunk. You gotta make sure you go in and you set it to four bars before you record. Things like that, kind of small limitations. So yeah, then you've got the nine channel or nine pad maximum. So these nine pads are all you're gonna have. You don't get more of those, you can't load another set of nine pads, you just have one set of sounds and that's what you can use. That's kind of a bummer. I wish there was more variety than that, but it's meant to be a simple sampler. Another thing that's kind of annoying, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, but if you go to the sequencer tab, um, you can't edit the quantize interval. So there is an option to quantize what's in here. You know, if I have this on when I record, it'll be quantized by default. But say, you know, I go to an instrument I used, um, I don't know, let's pick one that's a little more exciting. All right, there's the kick. And I select all of these, get all of them. Cool, um, you know, there's options. I can get rid of everything, I can quantize it, duplicate it, copy it, or hit the dice, which can kind of randomize the rhythms. But if I hit quantize, it's literally just gonna quantize to the quarter note. 
Um, there's no option to quantize to the eighth note. There's no option to quantize to anything other than the quarter note, which is kind of a big bummer. This is probably the biggest limitation, in my opinion, to an app like this. So that's definitely an improvement that can be made. Another huge limitation is that this app does not yet support hardware MIDI keyboards. You cannot use a MIDI keyboard or any kind of MIDI instrument with this, which is, yeah, pretty big bummer. I think that's something that Andrew Huang and his team are looking at adding. They definitely wanna make improvements and make it bigger, which is super cool. I've heard Andrew say that more than once. Uh, I think that is awesome. He's actually listening to feedback from the community. He's actually already made some improvements um, and had some updates since I bought this. Um, but yeah, the way I feel about this app is it could be a super dope DAW. It would be, in my opinion, one of the cleanest, best looking, well-designed DAWs for the iPad if only it doubled down on some crucial functions that you might need for a DAW. Now, that being said, this DAW was not made to be a DAW. It was made to be a sampler. And it actually does that part really, really well. So kudos to Andrew and his team. You know, it's a beautifully designed app. It is available on iPad and iPhone. So that's one of the things I was mentioning before. For $9.99, you can use this on your iPad and on your iPhone, which is super dope. Do some music production on the go. You know, if you don't want to take your, your big old screen with you, you got an iPhone that works. Or maybe you're somebody that doesn't have an iPad. There's not a lot of options when it comes to just the iPhone, when it comes to things like samplers and stuff like that. Also, I know that Andrew and his team are looking to bring this to Android. There's a number of challenges as far as how to get development done um, for Android because there's so many different devices out there. It's really hard to do. I've heard him say for sure that him and his team are working on it. They will have it hopefully available for Android in the near future. Um, but until then, it is available on iOS and iPad OS. So shout out to Andrew Huang and his team for making a great app. It's, it's really well done. And if you wanna see videos about other really dope apps that I've covered on this channel, check out this playlist up here, which I will also link down in the description. And question of the day, do you think that the Flip app by Andrew Huang should be, uh, just remain a sampler, a really high powerful sampler, or do you think that they should put the work into making this into a full-fledged iOS DAW? Let me know down in the description. I would love to hear from you. Also, make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram. You can DM me questions there. Um, I'm planning on doing some polls as far as things to do for Q and A. So if you wanna ask any questions um, or if you just wanna keep up to date on what's happening with music technologists, follow me at Jarel Amani. That is it creatives, go make something dope and I'll see you in the next video.